Is the Old Testament book numbers all about math? Cuz I'm not good at math. Well, no. Actually, it gets its name because it begins and ends with counting all of the Israelites. And there's a whole lot of numbers, some of which might be a little exaggerated. Oh, yeah. It also has a story about a donkey that talks. <laughs> yeah, just stay tuned. Okay, after two not so lovely years in the wilderness, the Israelites finally arrive at the entrance to the Promised Land. But it's full of Canaanites. So Moses sends in 12 spies, one from each tribe, to scout the land, the people, and the harvest. And after 40 days, they return and report. Two spies, Caleb and Joshua, are stoked with faith and gush about how wonderful the land is, even showing examples of the abundant harvest. With God's help, they know there will be no problem overtaking the people to inherit the land. But the other spies start to grumble, stepping forward and saying things like, Ah, oh, I'm Nobby, sir, and I don't concur. Yeah, and I'm Ghoul, and I've seen some guys living there that look like giants. The ten faithless spies totally focus on the negative and kind of freak out, feeling there's absolutely no way to overtake these giants and inherit God's promised land. So, who do the Israelites trust? Hmm, 10 versus 2. Yeah, unfortunately, the Israelites agree with the 10 fearful spies and choose not to move into the Promised Land, forgetting all the great things the Lord has done to get them here. And now, oh boy, the Lord is so upset at their lack of faith that He gives them their desire to stay out of the Promised Land for the rest of their lives until the older generation passes away. Then their children may inherit the Promised Land later. Whew. After wandering for more than 38 years, it's determined that everyone who wasn't faithful enough to enter the Promised Land years earlier is dead, except for Moses and the two faithful spies, Caleb and Joshua. So now, the younger, more righteous generation can inherit the Promised Land. Okay, are we faithful like Caleb or fearful like Nobby? Nobby! Have we witnessed God's miracles, but feel that the world's challenges today are too big, even greater than God's power? There's certainly no global shortage of negative voices pointing out all the reasons why certain things can't happen, while there are relatively few voices focusing on God's power and greatness. Still, the Lord continually teaches His people that with Him, nothing is impossible. Maybe we should ask ourselves which blessings of the Lord our current prophet has promised that we might need to wander for years to receive because of our lack of faith. Now, during these wandering years, the Moabite king Balak keeps seeing the Israelites traveling through his land and he doesn't like it. So when he hears of a man named Balaam who can curse and bless people, he sends men to hire Balaam to curse the Israelites. Now, Balaam isn't an Israelite, but he does follow God and asks the Lord what he should do. The Lord replies, Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam ignores Balak's offers, initially. But Balak keeps offering more and more money if he'll simply try to curse them. And despite trying to be obedient to the Lord, Balaam finally agrees to just meet with Balak. I mean, what could go wrong, right? Balaam then hops on his trusty old donkey and heads out to meet Balak. But the Lord, wanting to be clear about his wishes, places an angel in the road wielding a mighty sword to give Balaam a message. But he doesn't see it. Plot twist! The donkey does see the angel and immediately stops. Upset and oblivious, Balaam slaps the donkey and urges it to go on. Reluctantly, the donkey moves forward. But when the angel reappears in the road between two narrow walls, the donkey quickly turns into the wall, smashing Balaam's foot. <laughs> Angrily, Balaam smacks the donkey until it starts walking again. Finally, the angel plants himself in the narrowest part of the road where there's no getting around him. Not knowing what else to do, the donkey falls to the ground, splat. Livid and hurt, Balaam hits his donkey until the donkey starts to talk. What have I done to you? Why do you keep hitting me? Ah, uh, 
Because you made a fool of me. I'm your donkey. Have I ever done anything like this before? Then, prompted by the talking donkey, Balaam's spiritual eyes are opened, and he sees the angel with the sword standing in the road, and shamefully bows his head. The angel rebukes Balaam and tells him the donkey saved his life, and warns Balaam he may meet Balak, but must only speak the words the Lord will give him, nothing else. So, after arriving at Balak's ritzy palace, Balaam offers several sacrifices and asks the Lord what to do. In response, the Lord fills Balaam's mouth with the words he should speak, and he surprisingly declares a powerful blessing upon the Israelites. Balak is unamused and angrily orders him to try again. But each time Balaam tries to curse the Israelites, he pronounces greater and greater blessings, even prophesying about Christ. Balak wants curses, not blessings, and furiously sends Balaam away. Okay, much can be learned from Balaam. Perhaps most importantly, obey God, keep our spiritual eyes open, and don't let worldly temptations take us off the right path. And always be nice to your donkey. Finally, after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, it's time for the children of Israel to enter the Promised Land. But first, before Moses receives his reward for his amazing obedience and is taken by God's hand for another mission, he shares his final message. It takes a lot to make these videos, so to keep Line Upon Line free for everyone, consider donating. The link's in the description below. And thanks for watching. This episode is packed with info, so you might want to watch it again to make sure you didn't miss anything, including the hilarious jokes. If you feel this video has helped you on your path towards truth and Christian discipleship, please subscribe and share. Most importantly, go read the scriptures for yourself.